Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, an attempted assassination with a knife, I reunite with the 4-inch Vaquero and 10 totally unique folders. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. It's good to have you back here. Thanks for watching and listening. My favorite comment from last week was on the Stroop Knives interview I did a little while back with Chris Stroop. Uh, this is from Danzig Rules, like the name. And he says, glad I found this guy's knives. I'm a retired infantry, army infantryman. And once I saw his knives, I just had to have one. Now I'm seeing his knives being sold everywhere and knowing that it's supporting a fellow veteran and his family is just awesome. Well, thank you for your service, Danzig Rules. Uh, this is the one that really got me. This is the one I had to have. Uh, got this uh, for Christmas from my wife uh, as a special gift. It also has the Knife Junkie logo in there, uh, engraved on the side, which makes it even more special. Um, so, uh, love the comment. Thank you for watching Danzig Rules. Good to have you here. Okay, so let's do a pocket check, shall we? Okay, so today I am carrying the Monterey Bay Knives Turbo. This is just not no ordinary Monterey Bay Knives Turbo. This one is has been totally uh, modified and beautified and customized by the knife modders. Uh, I asked for a sort of high voltage green, something that looks a little bit like the Statue of Liberty, maybe, and uh, mixed with like a Japanese race car. And uh, I wanted that sort of black wash blade. So they did a fantastically, well, they did a wonderful job on this knife. They also put a screaming sharp edge on it. And I swear it was uh, butter smooth when I sent it. It came back even smoother. Uh, they asked, what did I want done with the pocket clip and backspacer? I said, go to town. So they did this sort of... Um, through the Hubble telescope sort of view of the universe thing. Uh, that's what I call it. It doesn't quite roll off the tongue, but it's in, it's a sort of anodizing that makes it look cloudy with all sorts of beautiful colors. And at this point, it's so laden down with my hand oil. I have to Windex it to uh, reveal the beauty of that once again. Uh, but uh, I love this knife. I don't carry it too much. Uh, so today when I was going through... Through the knife case, it just jumped out at me, that beautiful color. But also, I love the design. That's a Peter Carey design. And I, to me, he's one of the he is one of the very cream of the crop in terms of high-end custom tactical folders. And he will call them tactical because that's the uh, tradition he came out of, even though they're they're um, so you know beautifully designed and his custom ones are are just built with incredible materials and craftsmanship that you know, tactical to me always seems rough and tumble. Uh, these could certainly take it, but they're things of such beauty. I can't imagine actually bringing them out into the battlefield. All right. Uh, next up, Jack Wolf Knives. I was carrying the laid back Jack today. Uh, this one hasn't gotten a lot of attention from me recently because, um, well, because the Midnight Jack came along and well, then the K9 Jack came along. We're going to be taking a look at the K9 Jack in a little while, but uh, this is the one I was carrying. Um, and it's funny, every time I put a different Jack Wolf Knives knife in my pocket, I'm, I, I think, yeah, this this is my favorite. You know, all in all, this is my favorite historically and then in terms of the Jack Wolf uh, lineup. And that's how I'm feeling today about this knife because I am a huge sucker for the number 47 Viper uh, uh, from GEC. And that's what this sort of reminds me of. Uh, but this has a more, to me, reasonable size. And it's got the perfect um, sway back. It doesn't sway back too much. That's one of the design tweaks that Ben Belkin put on these, uh, put on the, on his version of the sway back. This is the laid back, as I mentioned. Um, and then you get that full height hollow grind uh, on the M390 blade that you get from all the Jack Wolf knives. Just a a great, great knife and one that hasn't seen a lot of pocket time in the last two months. So it was great to uh, 
uh, pull it back out and have it on me today. Uh, the the pocket the uh, pocket slip is breaking in nicely. Uh, you know what I feel? I need a couple of like sweaty hikes with this in my pocket to really get the leather wet. Uh, but not too wet that it's going to go all the way through and get the knife and get it to really mold and kind of start to patina. I do love a leather patina, I got to say. And, uh, but that'll be the the beauty of having these over time and carrying them for years is that eventually uh, that leather gets nice and patinaed. Um, okay, next up on me today, uh, the Hogtooth Knives Tonto. Been carrying this a lot because of the collaboration I'm doing with Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives. Uh, this has been one of my most one of two of my most carried uh, fixed blades of all time. It's this and the Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo. They just carry so beautifully, and then the the knives pack so much of a punch for their size. Uh, so uh, I'm good buddies with Matt Chase, and uh, one day it occurred to me I would love to have this whole setup that that exact size, this exact handle, the exact sheath. Uh, the finger uh, guard and everything except different blades. Uh, and so I proposed that to Matt. He loved the idea. I sent him some designs. We uh, homed in on one and he's working on a prototype right now. We're going to make a small batch, number them and sell them. It will have his logo on one side and my logo on the other. And they'll be special and I'm excited. And this first one is a Bowie knife. So I'm very much looking forward to that a clip point. It's going to have a sharpenable swedge or a zero ground swedge. Not sure exactly how we're going to do that, but it's going to be a useful swedge in a scrape. Uh, so that's kind of the point. This this knife has been proven uh, in combat, and uh, I think that's a cool story. It's also been proven uh, just out in the field, busting open MREs and other stuff like that too. Uh, Matt Chase is a former uh, Marine Scout sniper, as you might as you might know from the Hogtooth moniker. That's a that's something they earn once they're done with their sniper school. And um, yeah, it's a it's an honor and a privilege to to know him and work with him. All right, and lastly today, I did have an emotional support knife, as I do from pretty much all the time. It's a it's a way to de-guiltify having so many knives. It's also a way to get to really know the knives. So this was on my desk all day. I was doing a lot of writing for work today, and this was the one that was getting me through it. Uh, it's a front flipper. It's a gents knife, but it's a little bit bigger. That's a three and a half inch blade uh, designed by Ray Laconico. If you, if you didn't already recognize those classic clean Laconico lines. It is true. It is Ray Laconico, and it's the only one in my collection. I, I'm kind of sad to say, because I think his designs are they're they're very appealing to my eye, and they are neutral enough in in their build or in their uh, profiles. I guess it's I, I guess I should say, like this knife that it's useful in so many different ways, and this one in particular, Artisan Cutlery. This has the AR RPM nine blade steel their proprietary uh, powdered steel uh this one is very nice and light and thin and this one was 55 bucks you can go up to s35 vn in micarta for like 100 um the maroon micarta with the black blade is very appealing to me but i just didn't knowing that this is not going to be a main carry for me i just didn't feel it necessary to to spend too much uh, more money. And I like that AR RPM nine. I like, uh, it makes me feel like a superstar uh, with the sharpening and the stropping because it really responds uh, very, very nicely and uh, takes an edge, a wicked edge uh, pretty easily. All right. That's, that was my carry today. Monterey Bay knives, turbo Jack Wolf knives, laid back Jack, the Tonto, the EDC Tonto from uh, Hogtooth knives and uh, for emotional support, I had the Artisan Cutlery um, Sirius is what it's called. Sirius. I didn't even mention the name. Okay. What were you carrying? Let me know. Put it in the comments below. I love finding out what you're carrying uh, and uh, kind of homing in on what I want to buy, new knives I want to get, that kind of thing. Uh, so please do that. Uh, if you are interested in helping support the show, go check us out on Patreon. We do uh, every interview I do now. We do an extra 
15 to 20 minutes afterward and I ask questions that maybe aren't appropriate for the main uh, podcast or maybe are off topic enough that uh, they don't fit into the flow of conversation, whatever it is. And so you get a little bit more um, uh, from each interview, kind of off the record is what I like to call it, uh, even though it's like it's not scandalous, but it could be. Uh, so there's that. There's the knife drawings. There's uh, uh, the you know the giveaways and other exclusive content. So go check it out. Uh, go to the Patreon. Go to the Patreon. Go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon and check it out. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at theknifejunkie.com slash knives. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. I want to start off Knife Life News this week with some actual news again, kind of like we did last week. Uh, knives in the news in a very bad way. Uh, Salman Rushdie, uh, the, the famous author who in the 80s, I believe it was, uh, Ayatollah Khomeini put a, uh, put a bounty on his head for three million bucks for writing the satanic verses, which I guess offended him. So that's how they handle things. Uh, but uh, Salman Rushdie uh, was at the Chautauqua Institute, which is a famed sort of intellectual gathering place in Western New York, beautiful location. And he was getting ready to speak. And this uh, piece of human refuse, we're not going to name his name, uh, came onto stage and stabbed him 10 times, 10 times uh, in, in a instant. That, that's how quickly this can happen. He might lose an eye. His uh, kidneys are damaged. He lost uh, his, his nerves and his arm are severed. That means he was attacked all over his body in, in, a, in very. I, how did that happen? I, I don't know how, how I guess this security was lax. I mean, people have known Salman Rushdie is uh, is a target for years and years and years. And and I don't know, maybe they. Maybe they lifted the fatwa at some point, but I, I think that's what that's called uh, when they put a bounty on someone's head. But um, very sad news. It, it is not looking good for him, uh, but I hope he survives. Um, my God, I hope he survives, not only because it would be a shame to lose a, a great cultural figure in such a way, but also just to thumb your nose at the kind of people who think that they can do this. Uh, May that guy rot in hell for eternity. Okay, next up, uh, Fox Knives modernizes the mushroom knife. Now, this is a knife that I discovered through my uh, through my love of Pical style knives, uh, the curved uh, tip down edge in style uh, self defense knife. I had noticed that some people online had taken um, mushroom knives made by Openel and sort of tweaked them to become sort of uh, small, light inexpensive Pical style knives. And I was like, what is this mushroom knife? A mushroom knife is, uh, its signature is a curved folding blade and then a brush on the other side. And then on the back of the blade, it usually has um, very sharp jimping for scraping some part of the mushroom. Uh, I'm not a mushroom forager, but uh, I sure am a fan of this knife, especially the way Fox Knives has put it together. They have it in a modern format here with a liner lock. I think that's 12C. 27 uh sandvik steel but you got that beautifully curved uh gently curved hawk bill blade it's got that nice thumb swale in the back and it's got the two ways to open it you can either pinch it uh with that uh, sort of nail nick up front or use the um thumb stud now on that forward curving portion that's where you get the uh that sharp jimping for scraping the stems or what what have you and then that brush on the tail end or on the pommel of the knife folds in. So it's not always hanging out there. Uh, it, this does have a tip down only pocket clip, but this is, I think the first mushroom knife ever with a pocket clip. So it's kind of a cool, um, cool knife. I, I don't know. I mean, this is the kind of thing I might uh, find myself getting maybe on the secondary market and then tweaking uh, for personal protection carry just for the fun of it. It is a very pretty knife and it comes in two beautiful, woods olive wood and eucalyptus 
So really nice. And <clears throat> it clears your sinuses while you use it. All right. So that's from Fox Knives. Lastly, in Knife Life News, uh, I want to just show that uh, Gerber is targeting the EDC fixed blade market. Okay. Gerber Knives has gotten a strange new respect from me recently uh, through the Zilch and then the um, Sedaro. Uh, that, that is their new, I don't know, Benchmade style knife. It's got the Axis lock or their XR lock and um, or whatever they call it. And that's a very, very nice knife. So Gerber has been uh, on the upward, trending on the upward for me because uh, I've been trash talking them for so long, uh, but they are coming out with some some nice knives. So here is something that I like seeing. Uh, these two little fixed blades, they're going for that EDC fixed blade market. That's a market I want to see grow because, well, frankly, I really like EDC fixed blades and I want to see more out there on the market. I'm not just talking about... Uh, the kind of knives you know I like, like the ones I was just talking about, little stabby, pokey, pickle style things, but also knives like this. This, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, sub three inch blade in a nice little leather sheath that it comes in dropped in the pocket or, or scout style on the belt. Uh, you could do some, all, all of your chores with this little thing. And uh, it, the... The appeal of the small fixed blade to me is is its strength. Uh, you take out a small sub three inch folder, say a Delica, and you have a, a serious task to do with it. Um, you know that that pivot point is always going to be the weakness and the issue. Uh, if you like knowing that you can pull out your knife and use it for just about anything, having a little fixed blade on you is ideal that's why i mean for years and years i had a neck knife on me and i just stopped wearing it like once i lost my bastinelli uh i went back to the minimalist for a little while and now i'm just sort of forlorn missing the bastinelli so i just haven't been carrying a neck knife recently but having a fixed blade on you all the time is awesome anyway so i want to see if if uh, gerber with their d2 and their sort of uh, you know improving designs and quality control. I want to see if these EDC fixed blades can break through, uh, especially the one with the micarta handle. It looks handsome. I mean, they're both the same knife, basically. One just has a handle. The other one doesn't and has black coating. So, okay, we'll see. We'll see. But Gerber, uh, keep it up. I like seeing that. The Sedulo, that knife I was mentioning before, is also American-made and a very good S30V uh, blade. So, that's it for Life Knife News. Uh, knife Life News, we start off with some sad news. We end with some uh, um, optimistic news. Maybe maybe things will be looking up here. Still to come on the Knife Junkie Podcast, we're going to take a look at uh, an oldie but a goodie. Actually, two oldies but goodies. One's back in the collection. And then I want to take a look at 10 very unique folders right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I've been mentioning how our bathrooms have been redone and we've been having a lot of stuff going on. So <clears throat> the painters left and all the work was done and there was some stuff that my wife was not happy with. And uh, and then there was also uh, a cabinet or some some doors that we never painted. Uh, so I had to do some painting and uh, that's fine. I would rather just knock it out of the way right while things are still in upheaval and then clean up and then be done, done, done. So I did a bunch of painting uh, over the past couple of days. So the Endura has been in the pocket a lot. I know that I mentioned uh, last time I did some painting that the Protec TR2 was coming around with me then. Uh, I, I like that. That's a good work knife, actually. The guy that I bought it from was a farmer and used it. You could tell it was gritty with dust when I bought it. He used it out in the field. So I felt no problem using it uh, in my suburban uh, mats using the, uh, you know, while I'm painting. Uh, but this time I didn't want to get any paint in the knurling and I don't mind. Uh, this has always been the paint and knife. So I busted this out. This is such a great knife that I just don't give it any attention anymore. But the Spyderco Endura comes in all these colors. This is VG10 full flat ground. This is the Endura 4. And um, man, what a great knife. I want to get one of these one day. Uh, with the serrations that's got a, um, uh, uh, saber ground blade, but with serrations, it's one I've always wanted. Uh, my buddy Ian, uh, 
knife knife dude uh for sure someone you don't want to encounter with a knife and and go against him he always carried one of those uh well he carried one for a long time and man the menace it's a charming knife you look at the endura it's kind of uh weird and charming but you, you see it with the with the full serrations and it's kind of just scary uh so this has uh it's an oldie but a goodie but it got a lot of use this past week and at one point i was looking to sell it i'm glad i never did Next up, also an oldie but a goodie, and also <clears throat> one that my buddy Ian had. I actually sold this to him uh, years ago. He gave it to his brother, who just abused it and then left it for dead. And uh, so he just sold it back to me. We've done this twice. Uh, we did that with the Spyderco military. I sold it to him. He never liked to carry it because it was too expensive. And so he sold it back to me. I wanted it back. And uh, recently he just said out of the blue, you ever, you ever want that Voyager back, you know, with the curvy blade? And I was like, oh, yeah, yes. I thought you'd never ask. So he sent he gave it to me. I'm I'm uh, I am going to trade it. He said he'd rather instead of the money, he'd rather trade. So I'm going to give him this. I think he's going to like this. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'm I'm going on the price. This was when it was available. I do understand that this is no longer available. And so to find it, it would be more than 60 bucks. Uh, but he's cool with, <laughs> he's cool with a, with this kind of trade. So that's what we're going to do. And he, I, I think he's going to like this. It's also got serrations. I know he thinks that, that he likes the serrations. All right. So this Voyager, uh, I put a screaming sharp edge back on it, but it was so dull. It could not, it did not go through paper. Uh, they really, they really, I don't know what the hell they did with this, but it also had mud and you can see a little bit. I thought I got most of it out with it. Had some, some action, some muddy action there in the, in the iron cross patterning. Uh, so this knife saw a little action with me, saw a lot of action with him back in the collection. And I'm very psyched. All right. That's it for the state of the collection this week. Uh, didn't get anything new, which is which is good. That's new, old, old, new. Um, but I was able to get through the week without getting something new. Okay. Something, something we're going to talk about now are unique blades. I was looking through my collection and thinking about some of the things that I have that are very unique. Now, at one time I was collecting on that premise. I was like, uh, I buying everything that had a different lock or a different blade steel or different blade shape. And I, I did end up getting rid of a lot of those knives because I didn't carry them. And I thought, this is not a museum. I am not responsible for, you know, holding onto these for posterity and, and showing the world. So I got rid of a lot of them, but I was looking through what I have and I do have some unique knives. And I want to talk about some of these blade shapes primarily. Uh, first one is the Tucson TS 336. Beautiful titanium frame lock is what I'm calling it with uh, with inlays. Uh, so, uh, sort of a, yeah, it's definitely a frame lock, I'd call it, but it's got a very nice ergonomic handle and all of that. But look at the blade. It's a mix of Quaken, uh, Quaken meets recurved Tonto. It's got a very deep hollow grind in the um, recurve portion, and then a very long upswept forward portion. That's and that, that's flat ground, and that's what reminds me of the Quaken. But but you have you have the secondary tip here, and that curve where the where the two different grind types meet, um, giving this a very unique. Um, I don't know. It's different from all of the recurve tantos I have. I do have some recurve curve tantos, but that upsweep, the the upswept. Uh, shape of that um, just kind of puts it in a no man's land for me. Is it a Quaken? Is it a recurved Tonto? And the answer is yes. Um, great knife. Uh, this is 14C28N and uh, it flips well. I don't know. My left hand is not good on camera, uh, but, but those giant thumb studs like you see on the 300 TS 300 or 301, I'm sorry, are really great. They sit, they stand very proud um, and you get really good purchase on them. And incidentally, you can also wave this out of the pocket using those big thumb studs if, uh, if it's your thing, if you so desire or need to. Also, it's got this nice uh, uh, 
canvas micarta, not canvas, what is that? Burlap micarta and the micro milling on the clip. So just a great knife, a beautiful design overall with a very unique blade shape that, man, oh, there's also clip point to this. So this is a clip point Quaken recurve Tonto. And you don't, you don't find too many of those in the wild. Next up is also a knife that reminds me of an ethnographic example. This is this reminds me of the Barong. Uh, that's the knife over my shoulder, one of the knives over my shoulder there. This is the Vosteed Cutlery Nightshade. A very, uh, I am finding out, uh, a very polarizing design. As you can see, I have the straight part of the spine lined up with that uh, straight line, and you can see how the blade dips down into the medium that you're cutting. That is the unique selling proposition of this knife. It is that downward angle, that almost kukri-esque placement and shape to the, to the downward edge. Uh, really efficient cutter. That's full, fully flat ground. It's thin behind the edge. Um, that's D2 blade steel because this one is their LT version, their light version, meaning basically light on the materials. And, uh, because the first one that came out was a was a bolster lock with M390, or it was a bolstered frame, uh, bolstered liner lock with M390. Um, but I love the shape of this. I love the angle presentation of the uh, blade to handle, and a lot of people really don't. I showed this to my daughters. They both thought it was ugly. Showed it to my wife. She thought it was ugly. Uh, some people have mentioned. Uh, let's see, Nick Martinos. A uh, good, good uh, friend of the show mentioned, uh, just not for me, you know. Um, so a lot of people are not so fond of that. To me, I, it's great. It's so efficient in terms of cutting, but also in terms of slashing. If you had to slash this for any reason, uh, your your edge, that big bellied curved edge, is meeting whatever you're slashing at much uh, earlier than your knuckles, meaning it's very, very, very efficient. And then also it puts the point uh, more in line with like a pistol gripped knife. So you don't have to torque your or angle your wrist so much uh, in a in a sort of um, with saber style thrust, if you will. So I, I really dig this knife. Plus it's fidgety as hell. It's got a crown spine, awesome jimping, liner lock, deep carry pocket clip, inset, and flat screws. I mean, this it, it it for me, it's firing on all cylinders, especially you uniqueness. That's three and a quarter inch blade. A lot of people mentioned they'd like to see this larger. I I joined that chorus. I would love to see this larger, and not like a four inch or four and a quarter inch, or something audaciously large. This would be a terrifying knife to to wield, or I guess to come up against. Uh, so that is the Vosteed Nightshade. I'm talking about these like, like I'm going out into, you know, into a pit fight, but really these are all EDC knives. Well, maybe not as we go down the, the row here, maybe they're not all EDC knives, but, uh, that Vosteed Nightshade most definitely is an EDC knife and an awesome one at that. I just can't help but look at it though and think of some of my favorite weapons. All right. Next up is the off-grid knives Raptor. This one is unique as hell and but let's look at it closed it's unique in that it's uh and i'm just kind of busting chops here but it's two inches wide at the peak here so this is a pocket hog for sure but what a great knife uh say you got a whole bunch of cardboard say you've gone to ikea and done something really expensive and then you've got a whole bunch of boxes to cut up this one will be your best friend uh, this and actually, I got to say, several other off-grid knives are my favorite cardboard knives. But look at that design. I'm calling this a hawkbill tanto. Oh, wait, ooh, let's call it a pentagonal hawkbill tanto. And I say pentagonal because, well, you can see the five facets there. And there's almost an extra angle here going up. So this is like one, one, two, three three, four, five. It kind of looks, I don't know. You look at it. It looks like a diamond. This thing is not just audaciously designed. This isn't just a something that Carrie or Ifache of off-grid knives designed just to look weird and to look unique. It does do that, but this is an incredible uh, EDC shape. 
this thing is really uh un um uh yes it's unique but it's really oh versatile you've got this uh two and a half inch stretch of very extremely thin behind the edge flat ground d2 and then it uh, maintains just about the same width through this uh recur or this hawkbill portion up front it's got a nice point a very precise point for um you know if you're doing draw cuts but even if you're um say cutting cutting something out to shape this would be excellent um, so I really like using this knife as well as considering it and looking at it. It is a bizarre one. And I must admit, when I saw it on paper or on uh, the Internet, I was like, "That how's that going to work? I mean, come on. Are you just doing that to be cute? Are you just designing that knife to be cute? But no, it really works. There's one issue I have with this knife, and that's the flipper tab and how it uh, sort of interacts with the with the forward guard portion of the handle. But we talked about it and he was, uh, Carrie basically indicated that was the only way he could make this design work. So I was like, fine, uh, I'll take it. Cause I love the rest of it. And the jimping by the way is awesome up here on the back of the blade. So very unique, unique blade style and blade shape. And the only one of its type that I know of, um, it's kind of like a reverse, Re reverse recurve tanto uh so very very useful as well as unique okay next up let's see this one uh, this is the one that made me say well when i said all of them are pretty good edc knives there are a couple here that are just clearly not and this is one of them though you could use it for all your edc tasks this uh happy little fellow is more about self-defense for sure uh this was inspired by the civilian, the civilian model uh, by Spyderco, and that model was designed and and invented by Sal Glesser um, as a uh, in response to a request by the government of or or some sort of security police force uh, within South Africa in the early '90s. There were lots and lots of rapes happening and lots of. Uh, civilian upheaval and unrest and they wanted some sort of knife that people could use without any training to great effect and so they developed uh, so sal glesser developed that s recurve with the point that you see on the civilian uh really cool knife and uh, you can see it in movies and stuff uh and very menacing but also very delicate the area where the forward tip uh, meets the rest of the blade was very thin, not a knife you would want to use robustly in any other way except tearing through flesh. Sorry, that's very lurid and vivid, but that's what it was meant for. This, the Black Talon, uh, is a Lynn Thompson update of that design. Uh, I'm sure he would bristle at that characterization, but that's exactly what it is. It's an update of the civilian design made way more robust. It's a thicker blade. Uh, this whole portion up towards the tip is solid as can be. You could use this all day long uh, it, as a gardening knife. I mean, no doubt this would actually be a very good gardening knife and pruning knife. But you could use it all day long, opening boxes and all that, and you wouldn't have to worry about that tip coming off. Um, now, I hear some spider fan saying the tip's not going to come off of a civilian, and you wouldn't be carrying it for that anyway. And that's probably true. Uh, but you could, if you like the shape and find uh, non-tactical utility in this knife, which I'm, I'm sure you could, especially like I'm saying, with vegetation and that kind of stuff and uh, using those serrations. Um, so, and and then... If that's not enough, you know, beefing up the blade, this is XHP steel. I think they're now in S35VN, but it's got the ultra robust um, axis lock in there. You can see the big giant stop pin that goes between the tang of the blade and the um, lock bar. And that's what makes the triad lock the triad lock. All the force that goes into the blade is redirected into that stop, sprint, uh, stop pin, which redirects the force into the rest of the handle um so this thing is robust this this takes the idea of the civilian and really really picks it up to where it needs to be uh, a knife that is universal not universal but useful 
in in any sort of situation <clears throat> except for maybe slicing ham you know all right next up is one that uh, comes to us from russia this comes to us from russia from Levan, <laughs> from russia with levon uh this is one of the uh knives that Levon brings over and uh, this is the crystal aurora and uh now jim i'm i'm looking at our lower third there i sent you the wrong spelling of crystal uh it is with a k crystal aurora uh but i think we'll all survive uh this knife is very unique and based on a russian style knife with that big giant fuller thank you <laughs> he is the man with that big giant fuller in the blade uh what a unique looking knife this i remember um this might be too much information but i remember waking up on a saturday morning last summer the summer of 2021 and uh you know opening up instagram to see what was happening in the knife world and levon was showing this one off and i went right on and and bought it because that fuller just just oh man it just took me i love the way that looks uh but it it ends up that this is a very useful thing to have on this blade as well uh so it's it's a full flat ground or i i actually i think it might be a very gentle full height hollow grind and then that uh fuller is pulled out of it and then there's a texture blasted into I'm not sure if it's blasted, but there, there's a texture in that fuller. So nothing sticks there. So this is a very slicey knife, very, very thin behind the edge here. And then zero resistance for that for that huge fuller. And then the shoulder here just sort of cl uh, splits the materials off to the side. This is a very efficient cutter, as well as unique looking and just interesting knife. Uh, this is one of my fancy summer weight knives if you will this is one that i'll put in shorts if i feel like carrying something um somewhat nice or something titanium for instance i'll pop this in my uh, i don't want to say it like that i will put this in my pocket and uh because it is super light uh just incredible pockets uh incredibly thorough pocketing is what i should say in those titanium slabs very very light um also thin slabs to start with. Um, nice light backspacer. Great action on this knife. Uh, the thing I like about the action is that it flies out like a uh, knife on bearings, as it is. But when it when you bring it in, it feels hydraulic more like a Sebenza uh, with slightly re less resistance. It's like very smooth but with a little resistance and I really like it. I've always commented that that's one of the features of this knife that I'm not sure if it's on purpose, but I really like how they tuned the detent and the action. Uh, before I get off of this knife, something that I also find very unique about it besides the blade and the action is the, the, the traction plan as nothing fancy would say. Um, so you have this sort of ceremonial jimping up here on the spine. I, I would like that to be more aggressive personally uh, because I like the tactile feedback. Uh, but the sides are jimped. This whole thing, if you can see that, that micro milling is, that's those are just vertical lines and it acts as jimping. You really, really, when you're pulling it out of the pocket, you have the same thing on the back of the clip, jimping on the back of the, it comes out very easily and it just really, th that strip right down the middle is where you're, finger pads land it's just very well considered and then up here where you might do a pinch grip it's got this sort of radial uh, concentric jimping in in that uh, like rows in that direction so you can hold it in this sort of pinch grip so really useful knife very well considered knife but also just stylish and futuristic looking but based on a traditional japanese i mean, I mean traditional russian knife the name of which escapes me at the moment. Uh, so if anyone out there knows, please drop it in the uh, in the comments. Uh, this is something I, I want to mention right here. <laughs> I get some people like there was a comment wrong on many, many counts. And that was the only thing they put in the in the comments on my video about a knife wrong on many counts. I'm like, OK, fair enough. But tell me how I was wrong. Like at least 
help some people out. Help me out. Help the people reading the comments out instead of just being like, I know this information and you don't. Uh, how about, oh, oh, well, actually, that was made for this or that. How about you just let me know instead of being a jerk? A j <laughs> I've got to watch the language. Instead of being a mama Luke, uh, how about you just... Uh, how about you just help me out? All right. Next up is a very unique one. When I saw this, um, I thought it was broken. Kind of like when I saw the Emerson Elvia. This one is the inversion by Kaiser. And it is similar to the uh, Elvia in that it's a folding Pical style knife. This one is designed by Dirk Pinkerton. I love Dirk Pinkerton's designs. He's also a really nice guy, uh, but just really cool designs. He does a lot of Warren Cliffy stuff, and then he does modern interpretations of classic ethnographic weaponry, and then he does his own brand of Pical style and little self-defense push daggery kind of stuff. A very, a very varied and diverse uh, catalog of knives he makes, but all of them are squarely in my wheelhouse. Um, this one, you look at it, it is funky looking, is it not? Now, when I shut it, you feel like the knife should be held this way and that the edge should be here. Uh, but then you see there is a flipper <laughs> on the wrong side, so to speak, uh, as well as the opening disc slash brass wave. This thing will wave open on your pocket. You open it up, you pull it out of your pocket, and this is how it's meant to be used. Tip down, edge in. This is a self-defense knife in a classy titanium and S35VN package. Um, but that is how it's intended to be used. That is its main purpose. So it rides in the pocket like this. You draw it out. This wave opens it up. It also comes with one that won't wave open. And then, boom, you've got it in your hand uh, ready to go, you know. Uh, but it is a weapon. You look at it, it's very weapony, but it's also very utility. This makes for a great utility knife. It's actually quite comfortable in this, uh, if, if you hold it this way, in just a standard grip. And you have still with that hawk bill and the downward pointed uh, Warncliffe blade there, or a tip, you have great placement for utility cuts without having to, to curve your wrist or do anything weird with your wrist it puts the point right where you need it for opening boxes and stuff this is a knife that i've carried thinking of it in my you know, carried it in my front right pocket thinking of it as my last ditch self-defense uh, you know knife but i've ended up using it for a lot more or or, or for other things obviously thank god uh, but yeah this is a very useful knife um strange as it looks unique as it is and uh, it is one of not too many pical style uh, folders. There are more and more coming. I, I know that uh, there are a lot of uh, custom builders making folding Pical style knives, but not too much there on the open market. Um, look at that. I'm just looking at the lineup so far. That is a handsome lineup of unique knives, I gotta say. All right, next up, let's take a look at, here's the only slip joint here. And uh, I said I was going to show this off later. And this is a dog leg. This is the this is the Jack Wolf Knives dog leg. It's the canine jack. And dog leg is a traditional pattern. And like what Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives does is he takes his favorite uh, traditional style patterns and then tweaks them and makes them good for him and better for all of us. Uh, he's got a sprawling collection of custom slip joint knives. and. Uh, he has distilled all of their best qualities um, through all of the models he has examined and owns. And when he redesigned the various uh, the various models, he put tweaks in them that made them even better. This on this knife, I have to say, I absolutely love the spear point blade. I'm not a huge fan of spear point slip uh, slip joint blades uh, when they're parallel edge to spine, but this one has that deepening belly towards the tip and the swedge it is an incredible cutter and very very handsome example of a spear point blade but the thing that's so unique to me about this one is the dog leg curve in the handle it looks audacious it lo it looks uh, gratuitous like it's just there 
to look different and look cool. But then when you get it in hand, especially as a single bladed knife and you don't have the, the spine contours of another, another blade interrupting the contour of the handle, man, is this thing comfortable. So it, it, it is a really, this is, this is function following form, wait, form following function. Uh, to me, uh, I gotta be honest. I never really liked the look of the dog leg knives. Um, and, and by all accounts, Ben has accentuated the dog leg a little bit to make it even more ergonomic. And, um, so this is a case of having it in hand and using it makes all the difference. So very unique uh, handle style on the dog leg um, knives. And, and I would say on Ben Belkin's version, the Jack Wolf knives version of the dog leg. Very neat. You can see it. If you're looking, if you're watching this, you can see how the handle curves. Here, I'll, I'll straighten the spine there. It just really, uh, yeah, it really dips down and, and gives you a great, let's see there. Yeah, look at that. That so that nestles right in that muscle part of the thumb. Um, yeah, beautiful knife. Next up is something that I don't think too many others have been able to do, and that is make a folding kukri, uh, a good one. And this, so this is the Fox Knives Elements um, uh, Jason Knight designed kukri this is based on the kind of kukris he makes that blade looks a lot like the sort of kukris he makes custom in his shop um, but this knife is unique in that in a similar way to the vostid nightshade we're very familiar with kukris in the wild the fixed blade kukri we all know what that looks like and then we're all pretty familiar with some attempts to make folding kukris and um uh, the best one I would say besides this one is the Cold Steel Raja. The Cold Steel Rajas, those are pretty legit in terms of folding kukris. But the smaller you get with that, the less it looks like a kukri. The, the Raja 3, the small one, looks more like a just a recurve blade. I don't know. It looks less like a kukri. This one, they nailed all of the, they nailed it all. And, or I should say Jason Knight nailed it all in terms of the angle of the blade to the handle, the curvature of the handle, and then the overall curvature from the tip of the blade to the um, pommel. It's, it's, it's like a one big half oval. And it does all of the things I was saying the Vostid, the smaller EDC Vostid does, except in a much more combative package. Uh, on that forward thrust, it is a legit pistol grip right there. You don't have to change the angle of your wrist at all but you have that deep recurve that s-shaped recurve that you get from a kukri and then you get the overall curve so that that deep recurve is also deeper because of the angle that it's presented to from the handle so really really great design i mean even if you look at the raja which is a uh you know the raja 2 is sort of universally hailed as uh well i won't say the best but as one of the greatest folding kukris. And if you look at that, should have busted it out. It has a, an overall straight form factor. Um, and, and that is not in any way a uh, criticism. I love that knife. Uh, but this one has an overall curved or arced form factor. And that, to me, makes the kukriness of this even more kukri. Uh, so it makes it a more efficient, more devastating chopper, slasher, and thruster. Yes, kukris are good thrusters. Um, maybe not at every angle, uh, but at many. All right. Next up is so unique. I only know of two other versions, uh, two other. Mm, I think there are only two others that I can think of right now, uh, but it's a folding, a legit folding dagger. And this is the Arcane Designs Antimatter. Arcane Design. Uh, um, I'm sorry. That almost got me. <laughs> you got to be careful with these double-edged folders. That's why they're not too common. They're not terrifically illegal everywhere, and they're not uh, they're not so safe if you're not thinking about it. Uh, you can cut yourself uh, if you don't use the Quillian to shut it. Uh, but Israel Bacchus of Arcane Design teamed up with uh, Felix of Something Obscene Company to design this knife. Um, 
I think uh, he really helped uh, Israel. I think Felix really helped Israel figure out uh, this sort of how to best house a double-edged blade um, safely and and um, uh, repeatably safely, I guess I should say, in a in an opening handle, so as not to cut yourself. They did a great job. I I love the shape of that handle. It feels so good in hand. Um, it looks like it might not because it's angular, but that you'll that's that's a common misconception of mine where I'll see something and I'll be, Oh, that's angular. That's not going to feel good. Well, that's not the case. Uh, definitely not in this case. Also, this is really good in reverse grip because they give you a little peek to cap with your thumb, uh, but just unique in its double edged folding nest without being an out the front uh, is the, is the antimatter. Now I was, I said there are two others that I can think of and that is the, the Maximus, I think it was called by Hinderer, uh, one that I would love to get my hands on. And then also another one I'd love to get my hands on, the um, Arch Nemesis by Sharp by Design. Man, and Brian Nado, that, what a beautiful knife that was. Uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to have that one in on loan. Uh, and man, I'm, I wanted it. <laughs> All right, last up, this is one that we don't see much of. Saw it a lot, maybe not a lot actually. A, a rare bird, but a, a, a much loved bird in the switchblade world is the stiletto with the Chris. This is the modern version of the stiletto with the Chris, and it's the Tylite Chris. Uh, I could have, there are a couple of Chris's I could have put out here, um, and all cold steel. So I chose this one because um, we have seen this before. Um, you know, with, they have the Voyager Chris out, which is awesome. Uh, but we have seen this in the old Italian switchblade format. Um, so I wanted to show this one. Why is this unique? Well, first of all, it's that wavy shaped blade. You don't see it much in, you know, everyday carry knives or, or knives that you can just buy from production companies. Uh, a lot of people think, or a lot of people might think, that it is just sort of a gratuitously shaped it's like uh just for mall ninja types i see a little pitting on this this is 440 oh no it's austin uh austin a little bit of pitting on this i'm gonna have to uh gonna have to sharpen that or uh flitz that out sorry uh off track there it is a an extremely useful blade especially in terms of uh, fighting, you know, it's it's got a very that edge is devastating, and those waves, if pushed in, you know, on a thrust, those waves are nasty. It's like a big bread knife, uh, and also the downward tip. Uh, the Chris is always has a downward tip as opposed to a trailing tip, just to do some tip slashing and snagging. Uh, incidentally, if you were to EDC carry this for like daily tasks, that tip is actually pretty good and pretty useful. But in daily tasks, that wavy blade might present some issues, um, not in terms of cutting cardboard, but it does uh, it does get to that edge in a somewhat oblique um, angle there. So this is kind of more of a weapony thing, but unique in that it is a Chris and it is a an extremely well done blade. That's the thing about the cold steel Chris's that uh, I don't want to say amazed me because they always do a great job but that's the reason like, when i got that chris and by that chris i mean the first one the voyager uh, i was amazed at how perfectly the edge is and the same thing uh, with this and the overall grind so it's uh unique for a couple of reasons that shape is very unique but also the ability to manufacture it and the willingness to manufacture it and go through no doubt some trials and tribulations making that happen uh is not nothing. All right, I just want to show uh, just before we dip out of here two also rands or runners up. This one is very unique. Uh, this is by uh, Nick Rogers of Niche Designs. This is a prototype, the Ingress. Uh, he never went to production on this, but I was lucky enough. He was kind enough to give me this prototype, and uh, this is a one of the true prizes of my collection. I love this knife. Um, but I cannot add it to this because this is not readily gotten. All of these knives you can you can get. Um, 
but this one you cannot but very unique uh beautiful looking shocking and and audacious but also familiar and uh and by the way a great cutter nick rogers uh niche designs he just released the ahab with artisan and i think he's got another one on the way um and also in this category uh, of also rands is a another slip joint this is the beer and sausage a uh, knife from GEC Cutlery. Uh, it's the number 35 frame, so that's a cigar frame. Um, they have one called the Churchill on this frame that I've always wanted. But this is what makes it unique. It's the tool set. So this is for the urban hipster. Uh, the beer and sausage, you go to your favorite, uh, you go to Radagast. That was my favorite beer and sausage hall in Brooklyn when I lived there. I don't know if it's still there. Uh, but this would have been a cool knife to have, and I would have been the talk of the town. Uh, I could cut, you know, drink my beer and then cut my sausage with that and uh, pick them up with that cool fork, open up new beers with that, and then brush out my hipster beard and all the crumbs that have accumulated with the comb. Very cool. I love this knife. I think it's cool just for its uniqueness and, and kind of just differentness. Uh, that was given to me as a gift. Uh, from uh, Mr. Mike Latham of, of um, CollectorKnives.net. He really bristled at that design, thought it was an affront to uh, classic slip joint knives. And I could see where he's coming from, but uh, his, his uh, disgust is my joy. <laughs> so I'm really happy to have that knife. All right, these are the totally unique knives in my collection, folder edition. Uh, went through the fixed blades. There's some unique ones, but I don't think there are enough. Um, so maybe I need to go uh, fluff up that part of the sub collection. All right. So that does it for me. Let me know what your unique uh, folder designs are in the comments below. Love to check them out. And uh, I just implore you have a wonderful week. Uh, check us out on Sunday for the interview show and uh, and join us on Thursday Night Knives at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube, Facebook or Twitch. It is a great time. One of my favorite times of the week. And also, you can uh, download us here on the podcast apps and listen whilst on the go. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast